Good morning, everybody. Welcome back, guys, to Altcoin Daily. Great to have you back. We got a lot of news for you today. A couple game changers. Uh, real quick, if you're new to the channel, which I assume most of you are, uh, just what we do here, we bring you daily news on everything altcoin, everything cryptocurrency, daily market strategies, and regular deep dives on the latest ICOs, most current altcoins. Here's the thing. If you guys are new, you're going to want to hit the, hit the subscribe button right now. Go ahead and find it. Hit it right now because what I do um, is I really try and cut through all the crap, cut through all the bullshit, and really just bring you the most relevant, most pertinent information on what you need to know to stay current on this growing industry. Uh, you know, as I've said, and many people have said before, it's kind of like with cryptocurrency, like we're back in 1995 with the internet, and this whole new technology is uh, changing. And there's, there's scams. And then again, there's great companies. And I'm going to try and cut through all the bullshit, and bring you guys what you need to know, because I've been involved in the cryptocurrency game for a while. I check the market every day. I'm trying to make money with it. I have made money with it. And I want you guys to do that too. That being said, quick disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. Um, you know, don't take my advice, really. This is just things that work for me. This is my opinion. But anyways, let's get into the news. The biggest news today, and actually happened last night, is the not record low, but recent low that uh, the market dra dropped. Uh, market cap came crashing down. It was, let's see how low this thing went. I was, I live in California and I was watching it last night and it got, I saw it got a little bit under, uh, Bitcoin got a little bit under 6,000. Uh, this is the market cap uh, broke uh, 300 billion, got to 279 billion about. Um, but what you guys care about is Bitcoin's price, because that kind of defines the whole market. Bitcoin got to under, I saw, got a little bit under 6,000. This is kind of showing its base around around 6,000. Um, I was watching that, and I actually, when, when Bitcoin was around 6,100-ish, between 6,000 and 6,100, <laughs> I, uh, uh, I went and bought about just $600 worth of Bitcoin, um, you know, just because I was like, wow, this is really low. I don't know if it could get lower. And, uh, you know, it's went up, you know, about $1,500 so far. Will it keep going up? Probably not. Will it find a base or a level of resistance and form uh, a base? Yeah, hopefully it does. Could it go lower than 6,000? Could it go to 5,000? Yes, it could. Um, however, I do think in the next month, in the next three weeks, Bitcoin is going to start going up. Now, here's the thing. Bitcoin went up 1,500 from its you know, recent low last night, and now we're at 7,700 and we're going up and, you know, people are thinking, oh, that's really good. That's really good. But, you know, I just remember like a week ago, we were at like 8,000 and then before that 9,000 and before that 10,000. So, uh, you know, people forget quickly and just, you know, see the most recent stuff. But I do think, you know, it, it, it can only get, it, it's eventually it's going to get low enough that just psychologically, people are want to get involved. They're going to see, wow, Bitcoin and these other things, they're really low. I know that they can get 100 times, 10 times higher. And, you know, just psychologically, people are going to want to start going in. Um, and also, I think the media will eventually change its tune because these corporate fat cats are using the corporate media to, uh, you know, create a lot of FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, uh, so they can buy in low. That's just my opinion. Anyway, to put things more in perspective, uh, CNN... Okay, cool. It's not it's not the CNN, uh, but uh, this website right here, uh, they pulled this image from Reddit and they did a little report on the history of Bitcoin corrections. And it's pretty interesting to look at. Uh, this list is um, major corrections above 30% starting back in 2012. Back in 2012, Bitcoin reached a record high of $7.38, then plummeted 50% to $3.80. Boy, I bet when the Bitcoin price got back up to seven dollars even higher than seven dollars people sold because they're like oh, i don't know if we can get higher than this let's go over here and that was a 16-day correction kind of a lot of time let's go a year later november 30th 2013 bitcoin was all the way up at record one thousand one hundred dollars and plummeted uh, to only $152, almost a 90% correction, probably seemed like the end of Bitcoin. It took 411 days to go back to its highest high. I bet a lot of people, when it got to 1000 or maybe even got to 2000 a lot of people sold. Didn't think it could go any higher. And now let's cut to today. 
you know, we've had over this is I don't know if this is the most accurate, but it's about a 60% correction, maybe a little bit higher. Um, so far, it's been going 48 days, um, went up from almost 20,000 to what we now know is a little under 6,000. Uh, um, I bet when a lot of people I, I bet when this goes back up to uh, 20,000 people are going to be cashing out. Here's the thing guys, I'm not opposed to taking profits, but let's look in the future. Uh, Bitcoin still has a very low total market cap. Uh, you know, right now it's uh, less than, uh, well, right now it's a uh, 300 uh, billion mar market cap. It's gotten a lot higher, but even uh, when the, uh, what is it? <laughs> I'm trying to think of the word. The uh, dot com bubble of 1995 through like 2000 you know even um at that highest market cap for the dot com bubble um it was still in the trillions and that was just you know really focused in the u.s that the you know the stock market and the nasdaq that you know this is a global thing so we have a lot of room to grow here that's all i'm saying now let's get into some more news the u.s oh in the u.s the sec and the cftc cryptocurrency meeting continues existing regulatory narrative all right so the dedicated session involving the u.s secretary secretaries uh, the dedicated session involving the u.s securities and exchange commission the sec and the commodities future trading commission cftc is taking place today and it actually already took place i watched some clips and i read the transcript uh so we have the they report on the transcript right here before the meeting took place uh the written testimonies of jay clayton and jay christopher Giancarlo, the chairman of the sec and the cftc respectively have been released to the public uh this is uh something clayton states investors should understand that to date no ci ICOs have been registered with the SEC, and the SEC has also not approved for listing and trading any exchanges, any exchange trading products, um, holding cryptocurrencies or other assets related to cryptocurrencies. If any person today says otherwise, investors should be especially wary. So, of course, nothing has been registered. So, any company claiming that they registered, um, you know, with the with the government here, you know, they're obviously lying. Here's the overall. Um, this is the overall. Uh, you know, this is what I took out of the uh, out of the hearing, and it's, it's mainly positive. Uh, here's the thing: the U.S. the U.S. has positioned itself um, as like the go-to place for financial information. Uh, you know, other countries tend to look to towards America before uh, they make their decisions, or if America, you know, changes their mind, they you know tend to go with what America does, financially speaking. Um, and overall, this whole uh, you know meeting was uh, positive. Um, you know, basically, they were testifying they're open to regulations. Uh, they see that a lot of benefits in cryptocurrencies as a store of value and a currency um, and even functionality. And, uh, you know, they're open to regulations. So overall, I think it was very positive. Uh, oh, yeah. And then also the CFTC decided to do a take a do no harm approach to crypto regulations. The chairman of the U.S. Commodities Future Trading Commission has spoken of the need for balance and a do no harm approach when regulating cryptocurrencies. That's very positive. In a written testimony presented to the Senate Banking Committee, J. Christopher Giancarlo Carlo said that in his in this new digital era for financial markets, cryptocurrencies have brought uh, paradigm shifts in how the world views payment and financial process and that ignoring such innovation will not make them go away nor is it a responsibility nor is it a responsible uh, responsible regulatory response uh john carlo continues quote do no harm has unquestionably it was unquestionable unquestionably the right approach to development of the internet similarly i believe a do no harm is the right overarching approach for distributed ledger technology with the proper balance of sound policy regulatory oversight and private sector innovation new technologies will allow american markets american markets to evolve in responsible ways and continue to grow our economy and increase prosperity that is very positive they reference back to when the internet uh, came about and how america is one of the leaders um, in that and that they did no harm then and they want to do no harm now they don't want to get rid of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology they are open to regulating it this is very good. Hmm. Other positive news. Coinbase crypto exchange to roll out long-awaited SegWit upgrade in a few weeks. 
The Coinbase cryptocurrency exchange tweeted Monday that they will soon implement the segregated witness, SegWit, uh, scalability upgrade for Bitcoin addresses, which will reduce transaction times and fees for sending and receiving Bitcoin. So obviously this is now, originally Bitcoin was not intent, <laughs> Bitcoin in its original intention was uh, designed to be fast at transactions and have low fees. Now of late, Bitcoin has some of the highest fees and longest transaction time of many cryptocurrencies. But with this new technology um, that Coinbase is adopting, um, you know, they plan to reduce those things, which is really good, really good for the future. We'll bring more people in. And then finally, our last piece of good news. Singapore confirms it will not ban cryptocurrencies and has no risk concerns. That's great. Uh, Singapore Deputy Prime Minister Tharman whatever his name is, provide a new commentary on the government's commitment to not ban cryptocurrencies, cryptocurrencies as part of its future regulatory plans. Uh, this is good news. Uh, any country that takes itself out of and that does an overall ban of cryptocurrencies and blockchain, they're going to fall behind. Um, that's why I don't think China is going to totally let uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies go, as I said yesterday. Um, so yeah, anyways, going forward, uh, right now, let's check to see what uh, the market cap is uh, for Bitcoin and everything. So Bitcoin in the past hour is still going up. In the past 24 hours still going up. Of course, you know, seven days ago, we were still very much down. And that's, uh, you know, really for all uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, anyway, that's it, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. I think in the next few weeks, we're going to see everything going up a little bit in the next coming months we're definitely going to see everything coming up a, a little bit have we hit um, have we hit our lowest bottom of recent you know that remains to be seen we could go lower than 6000 on bitcoin um, in the next week maybe but i think in the next month overall we will be heading upwards thank you guys